Christmas Day, Austin was driving his Range Rover, had just gotten it buttoned up. We went for a hike, hopped back in the Range Rover. It was running, it was all good. He was all proud of himself. And we were a family in that one little Range Rover. After our hike, pulled out onto a, a windy little road and got hit head on. There's no question that car, that if we were anything else, it would have been much more serious. Did the Range Rover save our life? Yeah, it was a hard hit and we survived it. My name is Dean Cacavo and I own a 1992 Range Rover Classic. So I'm 22 years old, obviously been driving since I was 16, and the Range Rover itself was something I didn't take any interest into until probably the last couple years. We lived in LA up until a year ago, and there's really no need for it there, in my opinion. But then I kind of started to get into it. it seemed like a really cool thing, a really fun car. My dad had the Range Rover. It was, seemed like a good second car. Flew out to go buy one, uh, basically bought a Lemon, probably the worst one I could buy off Craigslist. I uh, got it home and then it was actually hit and totaled. And then the one that I have now stumbled on a few miles away from our house. My name is Austin Cacavo and I drive a 1991 Range Rover Classic. Dean and I started looking at Range Rovers back in the early 90s. We just really liked them and thought they were cool, but we didn't really have a need for one. And then we bought our first house, and I had a pickup truck. Then we had a baby, and the pickup truck suddenly was not very convenient with the car seat. So we needed something we could put the baby seat in and still get to Home Depot. My name is Donna Ray Cacavo, and I drive a 1995 Range Rover Classic. The first Range Rover we got was a 1991 short wheelbase. It was in 1997, so six years, seven years old. It's a great car. It was owned by a guy who owned cell towers. Great truck, it had a winch on the front. It had all the 80s, 90s office technology stuff, cell phones mounted everywhere. I like the way they look. I think it's aging well. I thought it was a good design when it first came out, even though they first came out in the 70s. Once we moved here uh, about a year and a half ago, I realized that the whole surrounding area is built on, I mean, off-road trails, you know, motor vehicle use map stuff. I mean, it's unbelievable resources, forest land for off-roading. And every single day I'd watch lifted Toyota go by or a, you know, old Discovery go by or a Defender go by and it just mind-boggling because I was like, where are they going? You know, I want to I go explore the same territory they're going to. I realized that like a Range Rover seemed like a really good choice. I uh, did some restoration on that. It just needed kind of the basic stuff. It was a really, really honest truck, so no rust. The paint is mostly original. There's definitely some spots that have been painted, but it's presentable, which is great. It's a great car. I mean, I do like it, but we kept the Range Rover because, again, it was such a handy vehicle to have for road trips and Home Depot visits and gardening. And, and then we kind of decided everybody wanted a Range Rover because now Dean wasn't having the Range Rover to always drive. We ended up with a third one. I've always liked Range Rovers. Yeah, I saw them in magazines, saw photographs, but they were unobtainable. They were impossible to get. They weren't in the States. They became affordable in the 90s. So I was super young at the time. I still remember growing up in the back seat. Back seat was huge. I know everyone that got in the back seat always complimented or always inquired about like, wow, it's back seat, there's so much leg room. Sometimes when you buy a car, there's a learning curve and it takes a while to, to understand the car and the quirks, all cars have. When you buy the next car, you already know the quirks of that model. It's kind of easy to buy another one that's almost the same and avoid the learning curve. When I was younger and I had a 82 Toyota pickup that I had bought brand new and I had that car for almost 15 years, I did a lot of off-road. I drove in the snow and that was like my most favorite. This one I haven't taken off-road too much just because we had it painted a few years ago and so we don't really, I don't want to scratch it. That's why we bought a third one thinking well, we'll get one that we don't care if we scratch it. I would say all my off-road experience has taken place in this car. The gray car I had before, I never got to take it off-road because it was such a lemon. It's almost exactly a year and a half ago today, I purchased the 91 that I have, the short wheelbase. Up here, it's, it's a good car to have. I mean, whether it's E28 or whether it's a Range Rover, but when the weather gets bad and you want to go up to the snow and you want to go snowboarding and you want to go to Tahoe and explore everything there is to offer up here, you need four-wheel drive. And since we already had the experience with the Range Rovers, there's really no reason to deviate too far from what we know. And I think that's how we ended up with three of them. I enjoy driving them on long trips. I enjoy driving them, you know, on light trails. Not, I'm never going to take a mine on the Rubicon. I'm surprised we have three Range Rovers, honestly. A friend of ours came up to visit us and he says, oh wow, three Range Rovers. Oh, so one of them runs and the other two are for parts? <laughs> I go, they're not Toyotas. <laughs> I said, these are Range Rovers, they all run. 
Most of the quote unquote restoration was just baselining and kind of restoring trim. All the trim items, all the things you touch, most of that's been replaced because it's just kind of grungy and got gross. The engine and everything, I just did the cooling system. I did the axles. Uh, I just did basic hub service in the front. So rebuilt the swivel balls in the front. Redid all the CV joints, things like that. Placed the radiator again, full cooling system. They're easy to maintain. Parts are easily available. They're pretty simple. It's an old V8. It's an old ZF trans automatic transmission. And um, just made sure everything was baseline so I can go and enjoy it and not have to worry about it. I think the worst thing was I blew a coolant hose in the middle of nowhere and definitely panicked a little bit, um, but that was really easy. It was just a matter of splicing the end of the hose and just stretch it over and that solved that. I was a lot more outdoorsy than I than I have been, only because of the mom thing. And so we haven't gone off road to which we've gone with Austin a few times to some easy trails, but we haven't gone all the way up to the Rubicon or anything with it. So I started by going on a fire road in this car. I started by driving over a log in that car. I started going through a you know water crossing in that car. So everything I've done is incremental. And there's been some times that we've definitely pushed the limit. There's some dents that I'm very sad about. Uh, there's some irreversible things that have happened, but all in all, I've been able to drive home every single time. I can do the speed limit on the way there and do the speed limit on the way back. And to me, that's amazing. The fact that I can go from fully off-road to back to the freeway is not a single issue. We recently took it to Scottsdale from Placerville and then won't, then headed out to Utah and circled around. It's a great truck. It's some light restoration, but really we haven't done too much with it. Allegedly that car was owned by Tom Petty. So we bought it through the Veterans Foundation as part of his estate liquidation. It probably wasn't until six months ago that I started outfitting it. I had planned to keep it 100% stock. Saw what it was able to do with just couple hundred dollars in parts, did that, got bumpers, wanted the winch, and really fell in love with going out off-roading, getting lost in the forest, having no service, hanging out with like really good people, and just spending like 48 hours in your own world, surrounded by nothing but nature. I had my Barbie camper as a kid. I wanted to drive across the country. I want to go to Niagara Falls, and I, for whatever reason, I feel like I want to drive there because I want to see various things along the path. But it would be fun to take the Range Rover and have it you know, with pictures at some of those scenic, classic spots. I would have not expected us to all drive Range Rovers. I would have expected that we would have one Range Rover. For one reason or another, it just worked out that way.